Hi everybody, it's Dr. Rebecca Lease, and this is my YouTube channel, UX Specs. I wanted to address some of the inconsistencies in the times that I post. Um, I have been moving jobs, and part of that has been trying to change my tasks, and so I took a little bit of a break, but I'm back, and also this is a great opportunity for me to kind of go over what happens when your to-do list just goes off the rails. One thing is to be patient with yourself. This is something that's very important, particularly with um, side projects, like this is a side project for me, so I typically put side projects on the back burner or something that, um, you know, I need to do is refocus in on work and make sure that I'm doing the right things. Um, one of the things too is that sometimes when I get derailed, I get overwhelmed because I typically plan very far ahead and all of that stuff gets kind of pushed off to the side. So what I do is I try to have a running list of things and ideas but I don't really necessarily feel like they need to be stuck to a particular day or a particular time. Uh, that was something that I had to kind of get over very quickly as I was trying to learn how to be a little bit more flexible in my scheduling. I actually tried filming this a couple of different times and I got very frustrated with the process. So that was another reason why I kind of paused on this a little bit is because I got frustrated with the process and I was really having a hard time pushing through that frustration. So here, without further ado, is the video on the name generator that I built in order to complete the giveaways. All right, so we're going to go over how to uh, set up a random name generator. Uh, and what I mean by random name generator is not generating a new name, a random name picker. First thing that I like to do is make sure that I have the environment set up. In this case, I'm using Jupyter Notebook through Anaconda. So if you go to, Ana if you just search Anaconda and then go to op the open source Anaconda from anaconda.com, that link. And then when you open it, you can hit get started and then download Anaconda installers, and then you can choose the one that is most appropriate for you. It can be done on Windows, Mac, or Linux systems. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to re-download it. Once it's downloaded, you can go here and look for Anaconda uh, Navigator in your settings, and it should uh, pop up a window like this, the Anaconda Navigator. And then I launched the Jupyter Notebook 6.0.3 is the version that I'm using right now. When you do that, it will actually launch this screen right here, which is basically where all of your data and all your projects. So in this case, we're going to do a new project and Python 3. It will come up with a new workbook. The reason I like using Jupyter Notebook is because it automatically has markdown code in it. So if I hit markdown code in this instance and I set up a, um, a thing like uh, first, first give away, and then I hit shift enter, it will actually start as a markdown heading, uh, the first heading. And say if I did that in just the regular code section, it will actually give me an invalid syntax error because it's expecting code versus markdown language. All right, so uh, just to clean that up, I'm going to hit shift enter again, and that is the hotkey for run. So if you are trying to figure out what that hotkey is, is it, it's just basically to run the cell. For the first giveaway, I compiled a list of names that I got from each one of the sources. I posted it on YouTube, on TikTok, and on Facebook. And I got a couple of different people. So what I did was I created a Excel file with all of the information from each one of the people that commented or shared or liked or whatever it was that I required for that post. 
Uh, and then I put it into um, an Excel document and created a CSV file from Excel for this. Then I uploaded it into my Jupyter notebook. So if you, you know, see, you can upload different files and that type of stuff. Um, what I did was I actually uploaded it as a, as a CSV file right here, giveaways. And if you upload it here on this page, then you can access it once you're starting to put code in or calling it or reading it or whatever you're doing. One of the things that we're going to use is the pandas library. So we're starting the first giveaway and I wanted to basically call in that CSV file that I created earlier. So what I'm going to do is import pandas as PD. And what that will do is that actually pulls pandas library into this particular workbook. So then I can actually call on the pandas functions within um, the workbook itself. The next thing that I want to do is put in, um, I want to read in the file with the usernames from the different people that completed all of the different components. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is create a data frame uh, to read in that particular CSV file. All right. <clears throat> And what I did here was I created a data frame and um, I pulled in the, the pandas read CSV. And then I uh, put basically, I uh, called the giveaway CSV file that I have saved in my uh, homepage for Jupyter Notebook. What I can do after that is print the header of my data frame. Okay. Cool. So um, from here, what you can see is that I have giveaway one and giveaway two, the source of where the person was um, interacting with the video. And then I also have their usernames in here. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at the first giveaway only. So I'm going to drop all of the second giveaway columns. And so the first thing I'm going to do is comment my code just to make sure that everyone knows what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to just uh, skip ahead for some of this. And what I need to do is make sure that when I put the data frame or when I'm calling the data frame that I'm dropping a column within that data frame. You can do this by putting columns uh, equals and then putting the name of the column. So I'm going to put T1 source because I don't really need the source for this. I just want the usernames. And in place, or did I today? In place equals true. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, so then what I want to do is do this for the other columns that I don't want as well. So I will not want the G2 or G2 source. So I'm going to change this and put in G2 here. And then I'm just going to make sure that the uh, columns have been dropped appropriately, uh, that it actually dropped the right ones. So I'm going to do the same, print the data frame header and then shift enter. Something is wrong. So let's see. Oh. I forgot the S. Okay, cool. Let's try that again. Yes, cool. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is remove, we'll see right here at the bottom, 
there's missing data because I had five people on one side and four people on the other side, which means five people completed the uh, giveaway two and four people completed the giveaway one. So I want to remove that missing value, that non-number value, the NAN here, by making sure that I use a very similar setup to this right here. So instead of doing df.dropColumns, I'm going to do instead of df dot drop an a and then close the brackets. Oops. That's actually fine. Okay. All right. And then all right, we drop that non value, the non number value. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, put in that random aspect of it. How do we pick out of these four names a random one, right? So what we're going to do is import random. And this is another library that allows us to be able to uh, pull on different random number generators. So one of the things that I need to do is make sure that I am defining what usernames is. And that this is the data frame column 31. And then what I need to do is print the usernames. All right, so I've printed the usernames. I've defined what usernames is now. Then I need to figure out who is the winner by putting in a random, well, in the random library. And then what I'm going to do here is use random choice. And this allows me to create um, a random, uh, you know, picker that uses not only numerical data, but can use, uh, you know, language data as well, which is what we have here. So this will do random choice, and then we're looking for usernames. And then uh, we're going to print, what are we gonna print? Uh, we'll print winner plus, let's see, congrats. So some kind of exclamation like, yay, awesome, cool, you won stuff. And so what it's going to do is it's going to call on that winner uh, who is a random choice from these usernames. And then it's going to print out who that winner is plus the text, uh, comma, congrats. It's actually, thanks. All right. So, moment of truth. Yay, Ryan is our winner. All right, I will be contacting Ryan so I can get your information and send you prizes. And that is how you build a random username picker generator out of a list of usernames. This is something that I think is pretty cool if you want to do just a random uh, drawing or a giveaway just like how we did here. So the last thing that I want to do here is just make sure that I name the file. I'm going to put it as random username generator from list using Python 3. All right, last thing, guys, I wanted to say that one of the things that I didn't talk about before in the other to-do list videos was the other things that happen when, like, life happens, right? So uh, first is just keep it simple. Start really slow. Start with just a list or two and then work your way up. Um, use what works for you. Sometimes what works for you doesn't work for other people. And sometimes what works for you now won't work for you later and vice versa. So 
the third thing that I really want to emphasize is setting reasonable goals. One of the reasons I really focus in on things like the Pomodoro techniques is because that helps me be able to um, estimate my time a little bit better. I can choose like, or I can estimate it based off of one, two, three, four Pomodoros, and then I can help myself set more reasonable goals. The other way that I set reasonable goals is by limiting the number of to-do items I have during the day. And then lastly, I want you to make sure to plan rest. This is something that is really hard. Um, I noticed this was something that I didn't really fully understand until I actually started working with a personal trainer. And each time I went to go do a set, I wouldn't take enough time in between because I was bored and I wanted to just get on with the set. And I realized that one of the reasons that I was not doing so well was because I was not allowing my body that time to recuperate and rest in that like 30 seconds to a minute or whatever it was. So one of the things that you need to do is be able to plan and rest for your brain. And there are a lot of really cool ways that you can do this. Um, you can use a timer, you can use one of my Pomodoro videos, whatever you want to do. Uh, but like I said, use what works best for you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe and hit that bell for more up-to-date notifications. Uh, let me know if you want to see more Python tutorials.